All right. So um, uh, as I mentioned, um, uh, it can, uh, let me just start local recording too. So uh, where you just clicked on online, uh, uh, on uh, emergency online class, later on, if you click on this one, you're going to see the recording of the session is going to be there on big blue button. And at the same time, usual place on YouTube, I'm going to upload it. Throughout the session, I will constantly poll you, which means I'm going to ask you questions. And the questions that I'm going to ask you, I see that Daniel and Zhang Kiong is, they are uh, uh, logged in listen only. Um, uh, I would like to talk to you guys too, so it would be nice if you could uh, uh, click on the speaker and join back with microphone. But if you don't have a microphone, or um, then that's understandable. Uh, the next thing is to show how the poll works. So when I actually poll you, you see that it says polling questions. The last time I said, can you hear me? Now, when I ask questions constantly, I poll you to see, to get feedback from you. So I'm going to say, for example, how are, like, um, can, what, what, what do I ask? I'm going to say... And something like this. So I see you. There we go. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Yan Yi, Van Tai, and Lily. I'm not uh, seeing your response to the poll. If you make full screen, you won't see the poll, okay? Uh, if you see I'm telling you that I can't see the poll, get off poll, full screen and you're going to see uh, the poll coming up. And then you will respond and I'm going to do publish. And then oh, you will yes. see. Sorry. There you go. Now I can hear you. And I thank you. Now you can see the polling uh, results are there. And I'm going to keep asking you questions like this. So keep that in mind. And... Uh, so um, I know who's listening and who's just logged in. So um, I am going to today, uh, today I'm going to kind of fill in the blanks. First of all, you know that the test is moved to March 10th. Um, workshop 6 is posted. Uh, the due date for Workshop 6 is the week after the study break. You can start working on it right now too. The project is going to be um, uh, posted to, uh, let me bring me over here. Oh, there we go. This is me. Hello, everyone. All right. So, yeah. Woo. There we go. So the the workshop um, uh, is posted. The project will be posted to um, no more DIYs. Everything is going to be in lab. Uh, so we're going to have lab and project. There is no DIY because the project kicks in now and the uh, that's uh, what you're going to see. Um, uh, the, the midterm is moved to uh, March 10th, and uh, I'm kind of recovering. Still, um, uh, still have a few sneezes, and uh, I just want to make sure that I'm not going to make anybody sick. So, uh, since the lecture yesterday went online, I did this. I'm doing this one online to to make sure everybody's safe and nice. Um, before we uh, begin, uh, do we have, is there any question that you want to ask? So I ask, oh, you, yeah. I ask a question and you can, if you can just activate your microphone like Van Tai did. Okay. Van, you had a question? Uh, actually, no. No, that's very fine. Said, I like you to activate your microphone and talk if you need to. That's and you can just interrupt me halfway through the whatever I talk about. And Brian has a question. Go ahead, Brian. And if you misclicked, you simply say uh, you activate your microphone and say I misclicked. So I know that you you misclicked. So uh, I see that Brian is not responding. Misclicked. There you go. And um, and one thing I have to show you, I see the poll results over here. Oh. I have to make uh, take turn this off. Okay, so uh, this is my screen of big blue button screen that I have over here. So I see the poll results, not the chat. The chat that you are talking is on the left screen at the other side over here. So um, 
if you type something on a chat and I can't see some hero, please uh, do me a favor and tell me there is something on a chat so I can look at the left side and see what it is, what's going on. Because my uh, focus is usually on the poll and not the chat because like that I ask questions. And if you have anything that you need to say, it's easier to activate your microphone and talk. So if anything's okay, I want to start the lecture. Uh, uh, are we okay? <coughs> okay, I see someone says, no, they are not okay. If you're not okay with, and you have a question, tell me. But if you're not okay, just not being okay, let me know. <laughs> Anyways, I'm here. If you have any questions, just go ahead. All right. Uh, the next question, can you see the fonts on a screen? Um, uh, are the fonts visible enough? OK, I see that Aaron is saying that it is not OK. How about now, Aaron? You can either type in a chat or answer. It's good. All right. Perfect. All right. So, uh, so this is um, what we have. What we had from last time. I'm going to just kind of fit in the blanks and tell you the things that we missed. So I'm just going to talk about it right over here. As uh, uh, this is the string that we have created last time, and uh, for the string we created several things. We created a constructor. We created the rule of three: copy constructor, copy assignment, and the destructor. Uh, we created uh, uh, the display and uh, also I actually made a friend over here. I'm going to remove that friend thingy. We don't want it. I'm going to go back and fix that one. So no friends over there. So display comes back in. Uh, so these are the things that we created. Display, uh, we overloaded the, the Boolean. Uh, we created the length that returned the length. We added two plus equal operators. Um, I ask um, uh, uh, um, of you, if you add anything to this, please uh, send the code to me and, um, and I will add it under your name. Uh, people uh, sent me code through uh, uh, Microsoft Teams. You know, we don't work that way. You know that. Please, um, if you have any code to contribute to this class, uh, get the class and your code, put it under your um, GitHub repository, send me the link of the repository, I'll take a look at it, then I'll copy the code. Please don't just copy the code into the into Microsoft Teams. We don't work that way. Uh, the next thing is to fix the, uh, the display that we commented. I'm going to bring it back and correct this one call by calling the display. S dot display. And I'm going to pass the OSTR and we are good to go. It looks good. Um, Yes, Jack, go ahead. Jack, you had a question. Activate your microphone. For some reason, your microphone doesn't work off the bat, and then you suddenly, it works. I don't know what's going on. No, I can't see. I can't hear anything. I see you're activating it, but nothing comes through. Um, if your microphone doesn't work, people, uh, there is down here something that you can click. Over here, you can select different microphones, so you can select the proper microphone to, to get connected. So that's something you can do if your microphone doesn't work. Anything yet? Oh, that's perfect. That OK, be. sorry for that. That's perfect. All right. Uh, just wondering if. Uh, the the amount of weeks covered for the midterm is changing or not? No, no, that's five. Ooh. It is the same. It's not going to change. Okay, thank you. It's the exact same thing. So questions are designed, everything's set. I just changed the date of the the test. It everything's identical to what it was before. It's just on the 
on the Friday after the break. Okay, sure. All right. Um, also, due, uh, throughout next week, something that I forgot to mention, throughout mes next week, our uh, workshop interviews and code review um, is going to happen. I'm going to select people randomly that you're going to uh, kind of defend your first five workshops uh, that you have given to me. So uh, I'll bring up your workshops and I'm going to comment your code, tell you what's good and bad in it, and ask you a few questions about your, your workshop. And you need to tell me why you did what you did in your workshop. Uh, if you need code review, book an appointment with me separately. Don't wait for me to call you. Uh, if you want me to go through your code and explain to you what is good and bad about your code, um, talk, contact me. But if you receive an email from me, uh, telling me that uh, book an appointment with me for a code review. You do the usual thing. Go on the Microsoft uh, Teams and book an appointment with me on the designated times that I'm going to ask. Um, I'm going to ask you to create a 20 minute, not more time because I'm going to be I'm going to be talking to many people. I want 20 minutes of your time. Uh, I'm going to uh, and make your code ready, clean and nice in your uh, workshop zero in your um, GitHub repository. So when I get to it, uh, I can actually um, see what your code comment and uh, uh, quickly uh, uh, access it. But I don't have any time to correct your your because these are gonna, people are going to be back to back waiting for the for um, uh, in, for interviews that we are doing on your. Um, on your workshops, uh, there's not going to be time for me to fix your files and organize your code. I have everything ready so I can just get into it and open your code and be done with it. Make sure you do that. It is extremely important. So are we all, uh, do we all understand what's happening for the interviews? No. Nothing else? Yes, go ahead. Um, so, so with the, the workshop from one to five, that's, um, that means I, I need to comment every single code that, uh, so you can easily to see the, the code, right? Not at all. Do not comment anything. I understand exactly what you have done. But what happens is that, for example, if this is your workshop that you see on a screen, I'm going to come over here. Okay, I'm going to say, okay, you wrote over here, if this. Why did you write this and what, what does it do? You've got to explain to me, I wrote this because I wanted to see if the status of the current object is okay for me to copy the screen. If it's not, I'm just going to set it to zero. So you're going to explain to me what it does. I'm going to ask a couple of questions like that. And also, I'm going to go through your code and tell you what you have done that is good and what you have done that you're not supposed to do and is bad. So essentially, you're going to go through. Uh, I'm going to kind of give you advice on your code. Are oh, we okay um, with that? Yeah, one more, one more, one more question. Sure. Um, is it uh you will be uh for like uh it's similar, like you want to see the, the workshop one or five or just, just randomly uh in the meeting? I'm gonna I'm gonna open up your workshop one. Actually, I'll go with the reverse. I open up your world workshop five, and I'm gonna comment on your code on that, and then I'm gonna go backwards. Okay. okay, until I so I just because usually if you made a mistake and I didn't comment on workshop one, you're going to keep doing it on workshop five. So workshop five is the last thing that is that you have done is you most your most recent, more ex, most experienced code. That's the one that I'm going to look at. Okay. And then I'm going to go backwards on that. And mostly I'm going to look at your DIYs, not on your not on your labs. Because labs the, are, are the ones that I tell you what to do. DIYs are the ones that you are doing it yourself. So that's going to be that. Anything else? That's all. Thank you. Okay. I see, again, several people who just joined us. They joined us with listen only. I do not like listen only. If you are coming in as listen only, please click on this. Leave the audio and click back again. Come back in and this time use microphone so you can talk. Thank you. If it's listen only, you don't have to be here. You can just leave and listen to the recording later on. It just doesn't make sense to be in a class in listen only mode. Okay. All right. So uh, let's uh, let's do this. 
Oh, thank you, Yota. Just uh, uh, mute yourself as after you log in. Perfect. All right. So uh, <clears throat> uh, this is what we have done with uh, the string. So essentially, we created a, uh, we encapsulated the the C string inside a class, and we called it a string of our own with capital S. And um, we uh, try to do all the dirty work that <clears throat> we have, <clears throat> that C does with its, its uh, null terminated character arrays and uh, try to make it look like a regular variable. Uh, <clears throat> uh, to do that, we created a constructor that receives a C string and builds up uh, um, a class out of that one by getting the me getting the size of the the the, the, the string uh, <clears throat> and uh, uh, allocating memory and keeping the data in that allocated memory or it could perfectly easily copy it by uh, uh, invoking the assignment uh, copy assignment because we want to reuse your code uh, when it invokes the, the 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 copy assignment it makes sure that it's not copying to itself then it's going to wipe out all the data that it has uh, there is one mistake over here that i see i have done it's a bad bad thing that i've done that is i i deleted the data Oh, no, no, actually, it's perfectly good. Never mind. Yeah, yeah. So the data is deleted, then it's set to empty. Then we make sure that the S that we have over there is actually valid to copy. And after that, we do our copying and everything is done and uh, beautifully set. So um, that's uh, the assignment. Uh, we uh, created the destructor by deleting the data, uh, overloaded the, the bool operator to actually... Uh, to actually uh, uh, get the uh, the status of the object to see if the object is empty or not length returns the length plus equal with another string essentially adds the string to this one so we check first make sure that one that is there is actually a valid string or not if it is then we're going to commence with the uh, with the um, the rest of the process and if it's not we don't need to add anything because that string is empty uh, for the um, uh, for the uh, and if it is uh, okay then we're gonna uh, get the length of that one plus length of mine and we create a new uh, piece of uh, memory to copy everything into it uh, first we make sure that Everything that we have is copied in there. If it's not, we're just going to null terminate it. Then we're going to concatenate the data of the other one to this one and uh, update the length, delete the old data, and set the old data, uh, set the, uh, uh, the data to point to the newly allocated memory, and we are all set and done. And we essentially do the exact same thing with the, uh, the C string. But the difference is that because C string is a... Um, primitive dumb variable over there it doesn't have a length so I have to actually invoke the SDR len to get the length and all the good stuff that I have but the process is exactly the same to display we make sure that actually it is not empty if it's not empty we'll just display data otherwise we're not going to do anything and just return the O stream for reading I have 4096 characters over here that's the maximum that I can go and uh, if I don't hit the 4096, everything's going to go OK and the data is going to be deleted and replaced with the value that I'm actually getting now and everything's going to get updated. But if it reaches to 4096, iStream is going to fail and I'm not going to do anything so I know that uh, the read was not successful. Now, um, I told you, like people are asking, um, uh, what uh, can I do uh, to get marks for the uh, to like uh, if if I lose workshops or I I don't I didn't get enough mark in something? Can you give us some some stuff to do to to gain marks and kind of make up for the things that we missed? These are the things that I'm posting right now. Uh, remove the limit of four zero nine six over here without using uh, the string of C++, the standard 
of C++ and get bonus marks. Again, all these things are going to be in your GitHub repository. So you're going to put all these things in your GitHub repository. And after you have done it, um, you're going to send me and I'm going to take a look and I'm going to, you're going to get bonus marks for this. So um, that's that one. <clears throat> Do we understand what is the very first challenge over here? All right, and you do that, obviously, you have to defend it. You have to tell me how it works. So I know you, you know what you have done. So that's our string. So the next thing I need to do over here is to actually um, see um, something that we did not teach. We talked about constructors, and we said constructors are what that is happening when something actually gets created right off right off the bat so we had stages of creation of an object so when an object got created so <clears throat> so the stages that we have or st uh, stages of uh, instantiation let's call it instantiation that mm, or uh, let's call it st uh, oh, just give me a second I have to pause for a second Sorry. All right. So, <clears throat> uh, I was uh, I was saying so the so stages of instantiation stages of instantiation instantiation are as follows. Okay, we know that when an object gets created, so when an object is get, gets created, we know the very first thing that happens before the object comes to life is the invocation of the constructor so first the constructor now the proper constructor i'm going to call it proper constructor will be called and then object comes to life But now we know that that's not actually 100% true. We know that, now we know that before that something else happens. All the initializations that you are doing over here, you see these things? All these initialization, in-class initializations happen before the constructor will be called. So the very first thing that happens is in-class initializations. will be called and then actually the constructor will be three not not it's not the first one it's not actually the second one the next thing there is a space in which you can do initializations of your own and that place it is not in any textbook it is just the the term that i refer to it because i think it makes sense that place i call it initialization area Okay, initialization area is a place you can initialize the um, all the uh, member variables. And when I say initialize, I literally mean that. You know that if in here, for example, I say m length is set to 20, I'm not initializing anything. I am setting the m length after it's being created. To initialize it to 20, I have to either write it over here, I have to write a 20 over here, or I need to write it in a place I call initialization area. The initialization area is the space between the closed curly bracket of a constructor and the open curly bracket. So this is one initialization area. If it's the one argument constructor, this one is the initialization area for the copy constructor and let's say if I uh, didn't have the uh, say uh, CSDR equal to null let's say if I didn't have that one and I actually had a uh, uh, default constructor something like that then I if I had over here string string again then the initialization area for it's got to be over here 
which essentially means uh, nothing's going to happen. So um, I'm just going to leave it like this as an empty constructor, which means uh, nothing is going to get uh, created and everything's going to get uh, uh, created by default. So this is the initialization area. Okay, how do we code the initialization area? Let's say uh, I want to, I, I do not want to initialize these over here and I want to initialize them in the initialization area. If I want to do that, I have to use the exact same sequence that they are here. Here I have first M length, then M data, because it's that way I have to put it the ex in the exact same order in here. So I have to say string M length, and in here I can initialize it to whatever I want. I can either set it to null, nothing, or say M data, uh, I can say null PTR, for example, if I want to. So they both work. You can do parentheses or you can do curly brackets. All the same. Let me just put both curly brackets over here. And for the bottom one, I'm going to change it to another one. So for, in, uh, for this one, just to show you, so another version that I'm going to write over here would be like this. So I'm going to write M length and I'm going to say M length I want to be zero. So this is old style of C++, this initialization area in old times before curly bracket was actually the universal way of initialization was not there. We used to do it this way. And for example, M data, I can say null PTR. So essentially I am initializing the M length and M data to these values now. And for the copy constructor, it's going to be exactly the same way. So, but you cannot put it in the reverse order. So, if you put over here m data, and and then m length like this, if you if you do it like this, on Visual Studio you won't get an error message. But if you take it on GNU compiler, you're going to get an error message saying, "Hey, uh, you are not." I don't remember what the error message is, but it's it's going to complain that the order of initialization is not the same as the as what you have in a string. Remember, these are very low level stuff you are doing. You are actually requesting for the objects to get created. And if the creation of the objects in here are not in the same order that they are actually created in the compilation time, then when M length is being created, there is nothing over here to match it. Therefore, it's going to fail. So you have to have same order in here. Do we understand this? All right. And to see exactly which one is happening first and which one is happening next, I'm going to run a test over here to make sure that what I told you is right. So what I'm going to do in here, for example, for M length, I'm going to put over here a 100. So I'm going to say if when the object is getting created, first it's going to be 100, then it's going to be here like this. So which one is going to actually happen first and which one will happen next? Um, actually, let's do something better even, not that one. So what I'm going to do in here is this. In debug, I created a dummy class called test, as you see. So it's class D test, and it gets a default value as an integer to do nothing. When you are looking at debug.cpp, that the constructor only prints the value and says it's created. Do we understand what this class is? So the class is nothing. It only is called D test, and it's in debug.h. It receives an integer and it simply tells that this is created. It gives me a number and shows me what is created. Do we understand this? So to demonstrate and see which one of these things are happening first, Danny, you said no. What you, you didn't understand? And you don't have your microphone on. Um, uh, please uh, have your microphones on so we can go do, it, do this quickly. Um, please get connected using your microphones, please. Okay, Danny, go ahead. That's not your proper microphone. 
please come over here select the change your microphone to the one that is actually working so I can actually hear you Danny I cannot hear you all right uh, okay I'm gonna explain the last part again all right so uh, <coughs> what I was saying is that I want to see the sequence of things getting created in a class I want to so I want to see which one is getting initialized when to do that I created a class a dummy class and I called it test and I just created a regular constructor in there that receives an integer value therefore dtest is initialized with an integer value all I do in the constructor of that one is printing the value so I know when it is being created now I'm gonna go into screen and create two objects in here I'm gonna create dtest oh I have to include debug so first let me include debug debug so in here I'm gonna say D test T1 and in here I'm gonna say uh, 1 so as you see it's getting initialized to 1 then I'm gonna say D test and in here I'm gonna say T2 and I'm not gonna initialize it to anything and let's bring back the initialization of length and data where it was before because that's not really a uh, a perf actually hmm, uh, let it be are we good I think we are let me just sorry this thing is going there we go okay so so now I have t1 and t2 and I'm gonna come over here and actually initialize t2 so t2 let me just bring it below these so I can remove it later on without much of a I'm gonna bring it over sorry X and bring it down here just to okay and now in here I this is the first second so in here I'm gonna say t2 and in here I'm gonna put 2 so and I'm gonna put the exact same thing over here so I'm gonna say t2 and I'm gonna put this one 2 so now when it's created I'm gonna look for the messages and see what is getting printed first whatever gets printed first that's the one that is getting initialized first do we understand this uh, yes all right perfect okay so now I'm gonna actually uh, start uh, compilation okay I have error what does it say uh, no default constructor for class what oh see it's actually giving me an error that's a beautiful thing because I had three constructors it didn't compile it because it says hey t2 doesn't have a default constructor and you did not initialize it because I changed the the constructor I, I created a regular constructor over here too and I forgot to put t2 over there so I'm gonna say over here t2 and I'm gonna put two over here so it actually gave me an error that hey it didn't have a, a default constructor what are you doing so let's uh, do it one more time all right so let's put this one at right and this one at left and close 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 so we're gonna come over here and two name uh, a name is gonna get created so f11 as you see it comes over here and the very first thing that is happening is actually uh, one is created and then after that it goes to this one and says two is created so as you see as you see over here this proves that uh, the initialize the in class initialization happens before the 
uh, the initialization area is executed. So when I actually look at my code, I see that this happens really after the first one. So this is correct. So I'm going to say over here too, it's going to be uh, uh, the initialization initialization area. Okay. That's that. So I'll remove that one, remove this one, remove this one, and go to the header file, remove these two, and, and recompile. Make sure everything works. Yeah, so I leave that one in the debug. You can use that. It's it's a useful thing to actually to have. Um, not a bad idea to have it. Uh, you can actually have these things, uh, have that one inside uh, the debug thing too, uh, in case the debugging of so it doesn't create extra code for your in your application for no reason. So in here you can say if you can say if defined uh, debug then this class is created so you do it like that with end if and we do the exact oh not the uh, the stds debug see so stds debug okay and the other one is in here so i'm going to say uh, if define SDDS debug, then do this. So, so what happens is that I'm not going to have an extra code compiled if I don't need it. So, if it's actually in debug mode, that's what's going to happen. Are we okay with this? Later on, you can just use this. Uh, Van, you said no. Why? Yes, I have a question that about um, uh, uh, initialized. So, it's what is used for? What because initialization have... is used for? Yeah, yeah, because uh, we have the default uh, construction and then we can use for uh, the default in screen. So what's in between that's what's you for? So what is it used for? Yeah. <laughs> OK, for that, I have to give you an uh, give you an example. OK, so why Thank do you. we need to have initialization area and initialization in class and then we can actually initialize and we can set it so so van first let's take understand this we can initialize a variable in two different places in the class itself yes in the initialization area these are the two places we can initialize inside the constructor you cannot initialize anything you have to set them do we understand this Oh, yeah, yes. Okay, so we have two different types of initializations. Why? The first one is what we have done over here. Like, for example, in here, I, have, I can have length and data initialized over here. If that's the case, if that's all I want to do, if I want to set them to zero, then fine. Let's do it that way. So in here, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to, where is it? Uh, so I don't need to have the initialization area at all. I can just remove these from here. Life is beautiful. I don't need to do anything and everything is fine and dandy. So, so I'll remove these things. <clears throat> I don't need it. And it goes like that. But yeah. what if, let's say over here, uh, I had something in a string that you needed to set it to something out of the uh the now nah, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna destroy this string i'm gonna go give you a completely different answer okay so let's come over here uh let's first like put, put over i'm gonna say uh a string tester So when do we need it?
let's say I have a class over here and this class of mine is to um, I want to give you a good answer for this um, I can give you a good answer that's too complicated first I want to give you a very simple answer for that I need to come up with a very simple example give me a second on this simple example <clears throat> let's say I have a class called validate okay <clears throat> and this validate class of mine is supposed to validate a variable and then change the contents of it based on different scenarios so if that's the case to be able to because I want to validate an integer that is outside of this class I cannot bring it in I want to be able to change it based on different scenarios for example <clears throat> do something like this so so I'm gonna say over here uh, um, public okay and in here I'm gonna have something like uh, max min so I'm gonna call it so I'm gonna say max in here void I'm gonna say max okay and this is supposed to validate an integer so I'm gonna put over here a value I'm gonna say this is the maximum value that it can have other than that we have to bring it down we have to correct it and in here I'm gonna say void min and this is a value that is gonna be set so <clears throat> just understand what the the class is supposed to do and I'm gonna have over here constructor validate okay <clears throat> and I need to have something like this integer val integer uh, value for example um, V over here and I want to be able to go C in V so C out enter and I want my validate uh, thing in here that my validate class I want to be able to say validate uh, VLD and I want to pass V in here so I can actually say validate max which means and I put over here 30 which means if that value of V is not l great l uh, less than 30 make it 30 the maximum value that it can have is 30 so if I have over here 40 and I say over here C out V I want 30 to get printed actually instead of validate let's call it correct correction so this this class's job is to do correction so in here so in here I'm gonna call it CR and in here I'm gonna say correct the value to maximum 30 and it's gonna so after doing this I want the value to become 30 do we understand this yes yes okay so if I do that how can I have this correction of mine keep track of what V is because V is not inside correction it's outside of it one way is pointer if I go IPC 144 but if I do a pointer then I have to receive a pointer here I don't want to I want to receive a reference so in here I'm gonna say integer reference M data do we all understand this and now I want to receive a reference over here too and I want to set M data to this refer reference so in here I can actually say if M data is greater than value set M data to be the value so it corrects it and in here I'm gonna say if M data is less than value 
set the m data to be the value so it corrects the value but the problem is that we know that references cannot be set to anything i cannot say m data m data is equal to data this is not going to set the reference i have to put it over here but i can't put it over there because i don't have access to the argument inside the correction if that's the case the only way to initialize m data is through the initialization in here so in here i can say m data data which means now my reference m data will be a reference to what is coming in and therefore whatever i do to m data will actually happen to what we have here so when i actually run this program i'm not going to get any error it's going to actually run m data because it's not created yet because it's not created yet it's not referring to anything you see i put my mouse over here and it doesn't even show anything but as soon as this is done now m data actually will be the data so it actually creates and initializes it now i can actually say max 30 and 30 is printed i had no way to set a reference to a value that is coming through the argument list unless i do it through the initialization area and that is why we need the initialization area because i want to pass a value and initialize my attributes within my constructor do we understand this yes yes all right anyone else have a question on this no one okay so I'm going to save this as B, why we need initialization area. Again, initialization area, I don't think there is anything out there in C++ world that means that. I don't even know where that place is called. If you can find it someplace, let me know. All right. So now we're done. So now we know all the different stages of initialization. Uh, the next thing I want to do, any questions? Any questions? All right. The next thing I want to do over here, and half of you are not responding. Iman, Joseph, Echo, Danny, Daniel, you're not responding to the poll. Okay. You said yes, it means you have a question. Arjan, go ahead. What is the question? Danny, what is the question? Echo, what is the question? Oh, I thought yes oh, yeah. means as in um, oh, okay, understood. Okay, uh, okay. But, no, no, I, yeah. I asked if, if there is any question. Okay, all right. Okay, so now that we are there, let's go back to our string and teach you how we can actually make this string act like an array. So, in my previous thing that I had with the string in here, string tester, I created the string name and I'm going to set this to uh, James, okay? So, that's going to be the name that I created over here. Now, what if somebody wants to find the third character in here the fourth character in here i want to be able to say for example see out uh, name zero and i want this thing to print j or i want to write name zero one two three three and I want it to print E. Do we understand what I want to do? This is very simple to do it. Uh, to do it. Uh, uh, so I, uh, that, uh, I see that uh, some people are not uh, quite sure if they are okay or not. What I'm saying is that 
if I want people to be able to treat the string as an as a safe array of characters not the one that when you go off limit it's going to crash on you I want it to be a safe uh, array of character echo uh, you said no uh, is there a question Echo, is there a question? Yalda and Soyun are not responding. Okay. That is why I ask you to please join with the microphone. Thank you. Okay, so to do this, I can actually overload the index operator, which is actually an operator. So I can come over here and say uh, something like, uh, I want it to return a character. So I'm going to say character, operator, index. And in here, I'm going to receive an index. Obviously, index doesn't need to be negative. So I'm going to make it a size T. And I'm going to call it index. And uh, uh, I'm not going to change anything, just want to return the character, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to return a character by value, and then in here I'm going to say, what am I going to say? I'm going to say, uh, oh, um, sorry, not here. Copy in the string.cpp. I'm going to actually implement that. So in here, I am going to say, let me come to the bottom in here. I'm going to say, these are the helpers. So I'm going to say character string operator. And I'm going to put uh, index. And in here, I'm going to say size T const. And in here, I'm going to say return. Uh, m data size t sorry size t index and I'm going to put over here index so if I do something like this what happens is that when the program is running edits were made to the code which cannot be applied okay ah, stop sorry one more time yeah so so when it's running as you see when it comes to this and say name I because it sees that the index operator is overloaded it goes to index operator and goes to the address of M data and returns M data zero we know that this is like a dynamic array right it this is a dynamic array and therefore the value is return and we're gonna have uh, J and E printed and that's how you overload the uh, index operator. Are we okay with this? Echo, um, um, if you don't understand it, you have to tell me what's wrong so I can help you understand. Either type it in a chat or uh, connect using a microphone so I can, so I can help you. Um, I see that you keep giving me answers that it means you didn't understand properly, but I cannot respond to you. Uh, either please type something in a chat or activate your microphone. Nothing? Okay. Jean Quinn. You mentioned that uh, you kind of get it. I want to know what's problem. Activate your microphone and tell me. Please respond to your polls accordingly. If you are saying no or um, yes or some, you're not saying yes, you have to tell me why so I can help you. Oh, misclick? Okay. Okay, uh, I'm going to actually next time I'm going to remove that one. So either yes or no. 
because many people want to just put the middle one because it's the correct answer for anything anyways so now uh, let's say this is lowercase j so if it's lowercase j and I run it you obviously you know it's gonna be the exact same thing but it's gonna get printed like that so it's going to work like that now oh uh, another thing if I write over here C out name then and I run this it's not gonna give me an error it's gonna print some garbage from somewhere so I do not want that to happen I want to make sure if somebody is actually giving me something that is not set I want them to stay in their own memory so I'm gonna play trick over here I'm gonna say return m data and I'm gonna say mod m length what happens is that because the length is the length that we have whatever the index is the remainder of m length and index is going to happen so in this case James has five characters over here so length is five therefore when index is zero zero mod five is zero therefore J is returned then the next one is going to be uh, what is it going to be uh, three so three mod five it's three then three is gonna get printed which is E now in here is 234 234 mod 5 will be actually 4 because uh, the, the remainder of 234 to 5 is 4 therefore X is gonna get printed it's never gonna go out of 5 no matter what you put over this so when I do like this if they exceed the size as you see they're gonna all remain in the same place so if I do something like this for integer I set to 0 and I less than 30 and I plus plus and I say C out name I it's just gonna keep rotating inside the name and it won't go anywhere as you see it's gonna print James 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 therefore it is perfectly safe and they are absolutely impossible to be able to go out of the length of the data are we okay with this? The only problem that remains over here that's going to cause trouble and it's going to crash on us is that if they leave something over here as an empty, if I say string empty, and I don't put anything here and try to print that empty thingy that I had so if in here I say C out empty let's say 0 and I'll try to run this program because when it reaches to this one empty is an empty class therefore m data will be null so when I say from m data go to an address and print that one it's gonna give me an exception I don't want that I want to keep that safe how can I do that it's very simple I can actually put over here uh, some kind of a character. I'm gonna say character and in here I'm gonna say ch and I'm gonna set it to some garbage so let's say 255 that is all once and then in here I'm gonna say uh, uh, if uh, this is not empty then uh, ch will be set to the m data that I have and then instead I'm gonna return ch so problem solved now if m data is empty that garbage will be returned which is very fine they went they tried to print something bad uh, garbage and, I, and I'm actually returning uh, uh, um, a byte with all st everything set at one not even zero so it's something it's it's uh, an impossible value and therefore they're gonna know so now if I run the program you will see that the program runs perfectly and it's not gonna crash and at the end as you see nothing's printed so they are very fine and uh, uh, they're just gonna have to go and debug so the program won't crash on them do we understand this
All right, so now what do I do? So this is perfectly good. I have no problem with this. Um, and it is a constant thing. It doesn't change anything. Everything is good. So in here, I'm going to say C, and I'm going to say uh, constant operator index overload dot cpp the next thing i want to write over here that is troublesome is what if i want to correct that james thingy over there because it's lowercase i want to say name zero it's set to j capital j and then go c out name as you see this is not going to happen because it says hey your name first of all it's constant Secondly, it's returning uh, uh, a value. There is nothing over here that I can set. At left side of this thing, either you have to have a variable or you have to have a reference. To fix that, I can actually create an operator that returns a reference. So what do I do in here? I'm going to say I'm going to overload the exact same thing. But the difference is that instead of returning a character, I'm going to return a character reference operator. And I'm going to put size T index. Like that. And it's just going to return reference. Okay. So let's uh, create that one. So this one is not constant. I'm going to receive an error probably in here, but it doesn't matter. We'll see. But uh, we'll, 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 we'll fix that when the time comes. So now in here, I'm going to have it set as I mentioned. So now it is going to actually return the reference of the character. I cannot put the same thing. I cannot put the same logic in here because if I put the same logic in here, then uh, ch becomes a local variable. I cannot return a value of a local variable. But I am the person who's writing the program, and I have the capability of concatenate stuff to my, to my uh, array. So all I need to do over here is to check the index to see if it matches the size or not. So I'm going to say if the index that I have is less than is greater than or equal to m length it means i'm in trouble and then at the end i'm going to say return m data index right so in here i have to fix the trouble i'm so because if i have let's say five it's zero one two three and four when it's five i cannot have an index five that's why this says if index is greater than length or equal then we're in trouble. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to simply write a while loop in here. I'm going to say while the index is while the m length that I have, the length of the thing that I have, is greater than or equal to index Why the length is, oh, actually, the other way. Let me see. While, let me see what I'm going to write over here. So if index is, so while index is, y m length is less than or equal to index, I'm going to grow the length. How do I grow it? I'm going to say this plus equal one space. We did that, right? We have the functionality right over here. We can actually plus equal, correct? So I'm going to say keep growing the length and set it to whatever it is. So for example, in here, instead of James, I'm going to put Homer with lowercase h. And I'm going to fix that with H. So now it's fixing it. And then I can even say name. So it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So I'm going to go not even 5. I'm going to go one further to 6. So I'm going to put over here J. Uh, oh, sorry, 6, 
I'm going to say is equal to J. And I'm going to say name 7 set to a dot. So although the name is not set and this is not right this is only have this only has five let's see what happens so one by one we're going to go through these and see how it's going to happen so it's going to come right down over here it's going to come over here because it can stay at left it's going to pick the proper one it comes to here index is zero it's less than length life is beautiful uh, nothing's going to happen it simply returns the reference of m data index Therefore, what happens over here is that uh, uh, name zero will be set to H, and what we see over here is going to be HOMO with capital H. Are we okay with this? Now, let's see what happens when I'm going beyond the index. So the index that I have over here is 0, 1, 2. The length that I have is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm saying name 6, so essentially means the seventh character. Two more than it has. What's going to happen? So it, it's going to go... Oops, wrong one. There we go. Now it's going to actually go in the string. Right in here, it's going to say index is 6, length is 5. So come over here. It's going to say while m length is less than or equal to index, add 1 to me. So 1 will be added. Now length is 6. 6 is equal to 6. It still comes over here. Adds 1 more. Now comes over here. Length is 7. Index is 6. Life is beautiful and returns that one. Goes back over here. Comes to next one. Is index greater or equal to length? Yes, it's equal. So it comes in. Is length less than index or equal? Yes, it comes in, adds one, comes up, length is now a length is now eight, comes back in, and as we see, it adjusts itself to the proper size. Now, even if they put the index beyond what it is, it automatically grows the string to the size that it wants and stops right there. Do we understand this? <laughs> And that, ladies and gentlemen, becomes a perfect foolproof indexing for my, uh, for my string. <coughs> now, the next thing I need to do over here is to make this string of mine. The next thing I need to do is to, to, to make this string of mine actually work with regular string commands. I want, I want to be able to see that when uh, <coughs> somebody does this, after all this, it says uh, character uh, C string name, and I'm going to put over here 50. I want them afterwards to be able to say, I'm going to add C string over here. I want, if somebody wants, be able to extract the data. I want them to actually be able to say over here, str copy into the C str name, the name. I want them to be able to do this. Obviously, this is not going to happen because string copy of the system that we have, what it has, it receives a character pointer and a constant character pointer, as you see, for the second argument. And obviously, this is not a constant character pointer. Now, what is the solution for this, people? Can anybody tell me what is the solution? Remember, you were supposed to have a test today. Yes, yes, it's, uh, um, I have a good answer. The one answer says over here, name uh, has an M data that is character pointer, right. But how do I get it out just with the name of the class? You can answer anything you want. So far, the closest one is 
one person just got two percent in final in in midterm think I don't want to change my source code somebody said put a dot notation something like name dot something I don't want that and also that's a class M data is not available and the rest of the class is not answering it's an obvious thing you already know how to do it do we have a type conversion operator for this what is the type uh, so what is the t what is the type that is needed in here so its current type is a string but we need to convert it into a c string what is the type of a c string uh character pointer no uh int no 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 it is character pointer but another type of character pointer uh, can you, you read this? Const, const, uh, const constant char character pointer. You got the two percent. Thank you very much. Okay, so it is constant. It's constant character. So we do type conversion. We ha we have the capability. I'm gonna come over here and say I want to have a type conversion over here of a constant character pointer const. And what I wanted to do, I wanted to return m data. So um, actually, sorry, operator operator constant character pointer and it's it's the simplest thing actually that you can do so in here all I need to do is to say return m data so I'm gonna say if at any moment my string needs to get converted to a constant character pointer this is how you do it compiler and because compiler wants to always cast and make the answer now everything is good so now the string copy of name over here, when I actually run and get to it, you will see. So when I actually run it and we come to it, when it actually builds error. Uh, oh, it's unsafe, it says. God damn it. Okay. Um, uh, let me just. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Copy. Okay, now if I run it and it gets to that point, it says, hey, at left side, I have a, a character pointer. Fine. At right side, I have a string. What do I do? I have to cast it to constant character pointer. Do I have the type conversion? Yes, I do. It comes in here and now it's actually going to return. What happened? It comes in here and now it's going to return the M data and therefore the M data will be copied to C string and it's going to get printed. And as a result, that's going to have Homer J in it too. Uh, are we okay with, are we okay with this? All right. All right. Let's, uh, Let's write another thing. So this was the uh, the type conversion and index. So I'm going to say over here, uh, cd type conversion and index overload index operator overload dot cpp long name, but it's good to know. Now the next thing I want to do is this. I want to write a uh, character name I want to write character name and for character name I'm gonna write Homer character surname I'm gonna write uh, oh why did I say character sorry string 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 not that string this string string and then string surname Simpson remove that C string because we don't need it anymore and remove this one we don't need it anymore now I want to be able to have something like this I want to have string full name and I want to be able and I want to be able to say see out 
name is name which I can I want to be able to say last name surname and then I want to be able to say see and I want to be able to say full name is equal to name plus J plus surname and I want to be able to say see out full name and L and I want this to print I want this to print Homer J Simpson do we understand what I want to do? All right. Surprisingly, as you see right now, it is not giving me an error. Take a look. When you look at this, it's not giving me an error. Why? If I run it, will it work? Let me first save it because if it crashes, I don't want it to crash the code. So if I actually run this, it's going to say, just it's, got, it's putting a dot for some reason. I have no idea what that means. So in here, I'm going to say, I'm going to do something like this. I'm going to say, uh, full name. So when I run this code, this is what's going to what is coming up. full name is dot what the heck just happened so do we understand what's happening in here do we understand that it's not working but it's not giving me an error so let's see what is happening and when I tell you what, hap what happens uh, uh, Son Yun, uh, you said no So Yun, you said no yeah, I'm just waiting for you to explain why why it doesn't work. Okay, so be with me. Okay, so I'm going to tell you why it doesn't. First of all, it shouldn't work because I don't have the plus operator. It cannot do it magically. What is surprising is that it is working somehow. We know C language always wants to cast to get something that makes sense. So, Jung, do you know what is this? What is the type of this? So, you know what is the type of this, the one that I highlighted? Uh, I guess it's just C string. Yeah, but what is, uh, again, what is the type of a C string? Const character pointer. Perfect, perfect. So, I'm just going to demonstrate something to show you. So, let's comment the whole thing and put it down here. I just want to demonstrate something to everyone to understand exactly what is happening here before I start coding. Okay? So take a look. If I write over here integer name, say 50, and in here I put Fred, <laughs> character name 50, and I put Fred over here, and I say see out name. what is going to get printed over here beautiful everybody is answering E which is perfectly correct E is getting printed we have no problem now I want to demonstrate something please please pay attention what is the type of name what if the type of name people are saying character pointer character array c string please don't say c string c string is not a type 
we don't have such a thing as C string. C string is a lingo between us that we are using. Okay? C string is a nickname we are giving. Character pointer is correct. And the perfect answer is actually constant character pointer because it's an array. Although we are saying character array, character array is correct and constant character pointer is correct. So it is a constant character pointer. Hopefully everybody understands this. So when I put an index in front of a constant character pointer, it shows the element relative to that index. Do we understand this? All right, now that we have this one, let me show you something interesting. Now, I'm going to comment that completely, and I'm going to write over here, C out, Fred, and I'm going to put two over here. So at left side, I have a constant character pointer. At right side, I have an index. What is going to get printed in here? Few, like three people responded, but they responded correctly. So far, nobody's responding anything wrong. Everybody's saying correct answer. Yeah, that's correct. Like, Two third of one third of class answered and they answered correctly because this is a constant character pointer the second the the index two of this constant character pointer is going to get printed which is e it's the exact same thing as the other one okay do we understand this oh sorry 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 do we understand this Now, knowing this fact, let's go back in here and see why we are seeing a dot in here. Let's bring it back. And so at this stage, when the right side is happening, I ha the only type that I the very first thing that is happening is this one. At left side, I have a name string at right side I have a constant character pointer there is no plus between these two so the compiler is confused so the compiler says can I convert this to anything that means something with a plus with name it looks at the list of everything in here and sees nothing makes sense there is no plus in here that does anything to it so it says now let me try is there anything that I can convert this one to so it means something with a constant character pointer. Constant character pointer is an address. An address is an integer value. So what can it convert this to, to be able to actually do the plus between the two? And what's going to happen over here will be actually the conversion of name to a constant character pointer. And whatever it is, the address that it has, or even a Boolean, actually. Maybe it converts it to a Boolean. Let's see which one is going to convert it to. Let me go to it and see what happens. I really don't know. So it comes over here. Let's see what it's going to go into. Yeah, you go. It goes to Boolean, actually, surprisingly. So it says that, it's, that there's a, there is an address. This is an integer. I'll add one. So Boolean in here is returning m data being not equal to null, which is 1. So what happens over here, it's going to add 1 to this address. So the address is here. When it adds 1, the address becomes address of this now. It goes one further. And then uses that address plus another surname, another Boolean. That's another one. Then it becomes this address. So the result of the whole thing becomes a string, which is a dot and a space. And that equal to a full name brings us over here. Can it convert the constant character pointer in an assignment? Yes, it can. It converts that one to a string, does a copy, and therefore my string will contain dot space. Complicated, right? Do we understand what happened? So never ever 
leave anything to default don't think that if the compiler is not giving you an error it means everything's good if you want an operator to act in certain way do it do not ever leave it for default the very first thing in here that is about to happen is a plus and a constant character pointer if that's the case do this at left side string at right side constant character pointer let's do it I can make it a member variable because the left one is an object so in here I'm gonna say string uh, and I cannot make it a reference because this should not change the name so I cannot return the reference of name it should be something entirely new so I have to return something by value therefore I come over here and I, I'm gonna say create uh, a string uh, operator plus and at right side I'm gonna getting a constant character pointer C string and what I'm going to do over here is pretty straightforward, which is I am going to <clears throat> in here say, first I'm going to create a temporary string that has the value of the left side. So I'm going to say string temp is equal to this. That makes a copy of the left side, whatever it is. And obviously, uh, all these things yeah actually no I'm not gonna do that because the left um, yes I can this is good this is good so I'm gonna do this so it's gonna be a copy of the left one now that it's a copy of left one I'm gonna say add the right one to it I have that one so I'm gonna say temp plus equal C string and now that it's done I'm gonna say uh, what do I say I'm going to say return temp. Done. So temp becomes a copy of name. Then C string at right is that J. So that is going to be concatenated to temp, which is a completely new thing. It's going to get returned. And as a result, at the left side over here, I'm going to have a temporary nameless string that has Homer J in it. So at left, I have a string plus another string all I need to do is to just uh, overload that one so the next thing I'm gonna overload over here will be very similar to the other one is going to be string operator plus and a constant string reference Oh, and this is a constant too, actually. It doesn't change anything. I have, we have to make sure to enforce that. And that's a const, and in here it's going to be right-hand operand. And it's that the concept is exactly like the other one. So I'm going to add that one. And in here I'll have to add the const too. So the concept is exactly like the other one. The only difference is that uh, the plus equal is happening with that RO. So in here I'm saying string temp uh, is set to me, which is the left one. Then I'm going to say temp plus equal uh, right hand side operator. And I'm going to return the temp. <clears throat> and the problem is solved. Now I have the two created. And when I run it, actually the proper uh, uh, the proper uh, execution is the proper functionality will be called doing what I want to do which is actually creating Homer J. Simpson. Do we understand this? All right. <clears throat> the next thing I want to tell you over here is simplifying code. Like, if I want to simplify the code, how can I actually do that? Um, remember that one day at school, we were talking about uh, constructors, and I explained what a constructor is. I put my hand in, it, in the air, and I screamed, you cannot call a constructor because constructor is not a function. Do you remember that? Okay, and I told you, I'm going to tell you when actually we can attempt to do something like calling a constructor, which is not calling a constructor. It's creating a temporary nameless f pointer, uh, temporary nameless uh, object. Take a look at the 
uh, implementation of these that we have done. I am creating a temporary string inside this function. So this temporary function is created. Uh, this temporary object is created. And then I am returning that temporary object by value, which means because this temp exists in this code, it has to die. Then a copy of this temporary object will get created, which is another temporary object that gets returned to the next scope and it's going to die immediately. So I'm having two temporary objects getting created, which is absolutely nuts. So essentially, um, I have the copying thingy over here and I have that one. Over. Let me activate the debugging and see if it's going to show us something. So in here, I'm going to go to debugging. Where is my debugging? Oh, here. So I'm activating the debugging and I'm going to run the program just to see how many things are. Uh, just take a look at number of things that are getting copied over here every single time. Copy, killing, copy, keeping. These are all the copies and temporary stuff that are getting created, which we don't need to. We only have three objects over there that we need to take care of. Okay, so how do we fix that problem? Take a look. Many compilers already, when they see something like this happens, they are smart enough to uh, make your code efficient by implementing it the proper way, although you did it improperly. Now take a look at this. We mentioned if you call a con constructor, what you are doing is creating a temporary nameless object. Do we understand that? If that is the case, then why do I create the temp? Instead of creating the temp, instead of doing all this, I can say return, and I'm going to say string, so I'm going to pass the string this, which means it's going to create a temporary nameless copy out of the current object. Then I'm going to say add to that temporary nameless the right hand operator. So the, no temporary, only one temporary nameless object that is returned is created over here and is returned by value. And by definition, temporary objects are never copied but instead owned which means it says, hey, you want me to copy this, this object? The object is already a temporary nameless. I'm just going to send it out. It doesn't have a scope. It doesn't belong to it. It's just about to die. So I'm just going to return that one. And it's the same thing over here. So instead of doing this, now I can actually create a temporary nameless return. And in here, I'm going to say string again, string. In here, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to say plus equals C string, and it works the exact same way. So the outcome is the same. It's just less amount of uh, uh, garbage created. Let me see what is this thing in here. I have, uh, what does it say, trunk? It's not going to get truncated. Let's do it one more time. Yeah, I think that's better. Okay, so I just casted that thing to character so it knows it's not an integer. Anyway, so that's that. Um, so uh, are we okay with that? All right, so that's how it's done. Um, and a, a, it's, it's 125. That's the end of your class. Um, and I know you have other classes to go to. So, so wait a minute, how many people can stay for 10 more minutes? If you can stay for 10 more minutes, let me know. Kevin, you raise your hand. What's up? Oh, no. Uh, you just I was just raising my hand saying I could stay. Yeah. Okay, I but see. I also have two questions as well after that. Yeah, sure, sure. So a couple of people are saying no, they can't stay. Please watch the recording after the marking after one hour and 34 seconds, the 34 minutes. So after one hour, 34 minutes, I have the last thing to talk about that I'm going to talk about. Kevin, go ahead. You had a question. Um, I was reviewing the header file for the string. Um, 
module. Um, and I noticed that you included the IO stream uh, before the if and defined. Yes. So does that mean that every time the string mod or the string header file is included, that the entire IO stream is also included or no? IO stream already has this mechanism in it. All the standard oh, header files, they already have safeguards in them. So that's why you put it outside of your safeguard because it's a redundant thing. If IO okay. stream is included twice, it's not going to get included I automatically. See, okay. So inside, outside, it doesn't make any difference. Okay. Got it? Yeah. My second question was yes. um, when you are overloading the um, the plus operator, mm -hmm. um, when you're doing the string, um, adding to another string, or a string is a constant character pointer, and in the return statement, you um, you basically avoided having um, a temporary object created. Yes. Now with an extra, the... it will be created. Oh, yeah. Obviously, an extra right. object. Yeah. Um, so does that mean that when you put the const at the end of the, uh, at the end of the, um, the function function? Yeah. Does that mean that it, because what a plus equals does is obviously it updates or changes the first or left hand side operator, right? Yes. And I don't want it to have, I wanted to enforce that that's not going to happen here because I see. plus in real life is not supposed to change the left operand correct so does I'm that mean that constant does that mean then that um because you put the const at the end there that um when you do the return statement it does you're making sure that it doesn't get changed as well like yeah this. i created a temporary not to change the current object and have a copy of the current object is instead correct but and right then now I made you, it we even don't better have a by doing this I see, but I know that when you you we, we remove that um, that var that variable where we create a temporary object, but mm -hmm. now you've removed it and put in the re like you've only simply um, put the the idea that you want to do in the return statement. Now, because you put everything in the return statement and there's no temporary object created, wouldn't that normally by default update the string this? No, because it, it is it is updating this one. This is the left side of the plus equal. So there is it. So essentially, what happens is that now it's doing this. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Never mind. I get it now. Got yes, it. Thank you. Yeah, okay. yeah. All right. And thank you for the question. Okay. So the final thing would be that we haven't um, have an example. We taught it, but we don't. We didn't have an example for it. And the is this one. So in here, I'm going to save this. So we know this is like a. I'm going to say um, E no side effect binary member overload. Okay, so this is a binary member operator overload that is has no side effect. That's the tester for that. But now let's see what happens. Uh, and and we've, we've already discussed this many times with different types of things that we had, but I'm just going to create uh, another example over here just going to make it crystal clear what happens if i if i have something like this if i have say if i write over here full name is equal to j plus surname and then I have, uh, I'm going to say, um, how can I do that? Name will be equal to, no, full name will be equal to mm, name plus full name. I'm doing crazy stuff here. <laughs> uh, Yeah, I think I'm good. So yeah, so this is what I'm doing. A very awful thing, by the way. This is very expensive program. Very, very expensive program. Okay. So to write garbage code, you have to really think. <laughs> and this is what happened over here. So I'm going to say full name. So again, I don't get any error in here, as you see. And um, 
if I run the program now and see how it's going to turn out to be, I'll see that it says, oh, Homer J, full name is, huh, it didn't work. It. I thought it would work, actually. Why it didn't work? I thought it would work, actually. Let me walk through it and see why it didn't work. So in here I have, okay, for this one, it at right side it has uh, a string, at left side it has a constant character pointer, Obvi oh, it converts it to a Boolean again. <laughs> okay, so that's what caused it. Okay, so 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 uh, we have to fix it. So that's not Boolean. I thought it's going to, I thought it's smart enough to actually build a string out of it and use string plus string. It didn't. It made it a Boolean. So it preferred the Boolean cast operator than that one. So again, as you see, it's not predictable. So let's actually do it. I want to have a C string at left and I want to have a string at right. Because the left one is a primitive, plus cannot be a member of the left hand operator, left hand operand. Therefore, this plus must be a helper. Because of that, I have to come over here and get out of the definition over here. And I say, I want a string. Obviously, it's a string. It cannot be uh, a reference of anything because there is no reference at left-hand side. It's going to be an operator plus. And at left-hand side, I'm going to have a constant character pointer C string. And at right side, as right-hand operator. So that's that's left-hand operator. So left, left operand. And at right side, I'm going to have a constant string reference right operand. And implement this one. Okay? So how do we implement it? This is what we're going to do. It's actually helping us to do it. So in here, I have return string. So as you see, I have this one, correct? So I'm going to put the left operand in here. I'm just making my life easy. So left operand in here so it's going to build a temporary nameless build a temporary nameless out of my left operand and I'm going to add the right operand to it I can do plus equal which one is more efficient plus equal with that one plus equal is more efficient because it doesn't create any extra stuff so I'm going to say plus equal right operand I could have used plus, but plus will, will, by definition of plus, the way we created it, uh, uh, it will create a temporary nameless. Uh, I don't want it. Um, I don't mind these changes because it's a temporary nameless anyway. So this is going to work just fine. So I'm saying, so I am forcing it to cast the left one, cast this uh, C, uh, C string to a regular string of mine, then add the right hand operator to it, then it return it, and then we'll see what happens. So, so now if I run the program, let's see what's going to happen. It's going to get in here, and now it's going to go to my operator overload. It's going to create the left hand out of J, so that's going to get created, and M data is going to be J. It comes out, then plus equal happens, and it adds the right-hand operator that is Simpson to the data. So the, the new data over here will be actually J Simpson. Now it comes out, returns that by value, goes to a copy constructor, which is essentially calling the assignment operator, and returns that one, and obviously the, the temporary nameless dies and then after that uh, the assignment happens which calls the the uh, this is essentially full name being set to what we have so now our full name will be actually J Simpson now it goes to right left one is name right side is full name plus equal plus operator is called a temporary nameless will be created with uh, uh, I can't even let me see if I can actually see what's inside. no I can't see what's inside I'm going to get out, and that temporary nameless that is in here will actually have Homer J. Simpson in it, and the full name that has the data, I, I deleted it sadly, but um, that data get deleted and replaced by uh, um, Homer J., and it's going to get printed, and therefore we're going to have Homer J. Simpson happening. So that's why 
uh, we needed to this thing uh, uh, create this as a helper usually when you cre uh, create overloads for similar type of operators it becomes easier to define the rest and the rest of them with temp with uh, mem with uh, temporary nameless variables and um, yeah, it's going to become a, a breeze so now our string has plus in it has plus equal in it uh, um, um, you need to um, overload greater than less than equal all those things for it so you can actually compare two names so those things do it as a practice so as practice for this make sure I'm going to say as practice, as a practice, as practice, create um, comparison. So logical operators, all the logical operators, operators. So less than, greater than, less than or equal, greater than or equal, equal, not equal, set all those things so we can compare between strings to see which one is what. Um, anybody have any suggestions uh, what you can do? Uh, substring you can create, but substring is a function. It's not, uh, um, it's not that one. So, yeah, that's it, I guess. Uh, I mentioned plus plus and minus minus operators to reduce the length by one and increase the length by one so you can make the length smaller and throw the last thing away from right and left so you can do it um, one person did it did the plus plus and sent it to me uh, if you are the person please put it in github and resend it to me and that's that any questions <laughs>